Hello, my name is Johan and I am a product lead at Valohai MOS platform. And today's topic is uh, experimentation at scale. And with me is an uh, expert on this topic. Serge, maybe you could introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm Serge Massis. I'm an agronomic data scientist at Syngenta. And uh, what we do there is uh, create uh, digital agronomy products and services for um, uh, farmers. So farmers want to know uh, when to plant. Um, how, you know, they want to know uh, what density of planting to use, uh, what you know products to use. Uh, you know. By that I mean like uh, crop protection products, herbicides, fungicides, and so on, and when to use them. In other words, right. uh, that might be informed by risks, you know, weather risks, um, or they could be, uh, you know, uh, fungal, um, you know, disease, and so on. Um, so a lot of my models predict things like, you know, yield, growth. Uh, of plants, disease, and so on. Yeah, that, that sounds cool. So uh, we're going to talk about a specific case that you had. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was something that you wanted to compare to modeling approaches or something. Can you give us a little bit of context of what was this project about? Yeah, this, this project was about uh, predicting plant growth at different stages. So it's it's to predict how long it takes to go from one stage of plant growth to another. So um, <clears throat> this is important because it, it informs a lot of different things. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, when to apply a product or, you know, if it, you know, if there's some kind of delay, you know, when to expect it and so on. Right. So, and, and in these different stages of growth, you have different kind of different data, right? Different features or? Yes. Yeah. Like uh, the things that will, will make a plant go from one stage to another faster or, or slower are different than the features that would inform, you know, a model on predicting on different, uh, another stage, you know, sometimes right. the plant will need more sunlight and sometimes will need more precipitation and other times, you know, it will, it will have to do with other things like soil properties and so on. Right. So it's kind of like multi-stage model, or I don't know what to call it, something yeah. like that. And, and in this project, you had some kind of situation where you wanted to, you had some kind of approach and you wanted to kind of prove that that's the best approach. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So typically you, you, you see a problem like this and, and the, the data is, um, you know, it, it has to do with space and it has to do with time. So like there's several ways of looking at it. Um, generally you want to see it, you might want to see it as a time series model, in which case you'll, you'll see everything as a sequence, you know, you have weather uh, features and there, you can have the weather on, you know, a time scale of, of daily or even hourly if you want. And you could see it like that. Or instead, you could, you know, squash it all up into an aggregation and, and see it as just an individual aggregation at a certain point in time, you know. And usually that point in time is, you know, the point in time as of you know, where you're going to start your prediction. In other words, you know, you're at this stage, how long will it get, take me to get to this stage? And so you'll have all the weather and all the different features for that stage for, for which you're predicting from. And, right. um, and uh, the, the other approach is time series. So I wanted to compare both approaches. Early on in the process, I had um, already made that decision based on a single use case, based on a single crop for a single region. And um, I had proved then that the best approach was actually strangely aggregating everything, that that yielded the best results, the most consistently good re best results actually. So, right. uh, but I, once we, we started using the same approach 
for you know half a dozen countries and and several crops i i started to you know doubt myself so yeah that's when i thought okay well i have to make an experiment at scale i, I can't be waiting you know days for these results <laughs> you know so what do i do so that's when i i use valahai uh to right so so, so to, yeah so to kind of prove this to yourself and maybe to your colleagues you had to build some kind of pipeline because this is this is quite complicated to prove right from yeah infrastructure point of view so may, maybe you could look at the pipeline yes yeah so this is how a pipeline looks in uh valo high it, it, right. it looks a, a lot simpler than it actually is um right. it is quite simple to set it up in valo high so uh you have a data preparation stage as you expect here and it's just a single node right and it just runs uh, a single script which uh you know um generates the data um, and also uh prepares all the hyperparameters it's going to test right so or... this kind of splits the d data for different stages of the plant yeah, exactly models. yeah yeah because it's not the same data that's used for exactly. a time series problem than it is for this uh, uh ensemble decision tree um over here so um once you get to these as you know this is a single execution right but th these are 140 executions right um, so this is this is where you do like two approaches in parallel right exactly so these these 140 uh executions are, are here each one of these is a different execution so and, each each uh, each box here is kind of like a individual container uh exactly. individual code running in and parallel. i can click on yeah i can click on each one and and see what was the inputs what were the outputs what were the logs and so on. Yeah, can or I click on one? I, let's let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, right. So this is like a one execution out of 140 for this. Yeah. This kind of uh, modeling approach. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you can see all the logs and all that stuff, right? Yeah. And another thing you can see if I click on this, um, if I just want to see like a summary of executions, I can go here and i i can see different metrics for for each one i can i, I can also scroll in into all of this and see other things you know like what were the parameters that were used right. in each one and as you would you know i could also um i can also compare them in different ways i can filter right. uh with this um or i can select what uh uh, columns to show right and then so if we, if, this... if we go if we go back to the pipeline uh so you had one last note there is that kind of like where the where you decide like which one is better oh this or... one yeah yeah this uh, this decides which one was the best model well it doesn't really i i didn't go for, as far as decided because i wanted to have all the data and be able to uh visualize it in different ways in 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 my local machine uh, i mean i could have very easily just you know outputted the, the best model and that was the outcome uh but the the point of this was as an experiment it wasn't just uh, okay select the best model and and deploy it which is something i could pretty much do with this pipeline but uh the outcome i wanted was uh was the csv with everything kind of ranked and and sorted um and aggregated and so that's that's what you get in the output right so so, so I, here here you run this pipeline with kind of 140 executions times two mm -hmm. in parallel 280 yeah but, but i i i i guess this is not the only time you ran this pipeline i i suppose you ran it many times and with different oh yeah so no no what, what fact, was the uh, what was the biggest one like was it 2000 or 4000 yeah yeah um, the biggest pipeline I ran was about 2,400. Yeah. Right. Times two or. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you're right. so two, you're right. you ran each approach 2,000 times. That means 4,000 containers in yeah. your pipeline. And yeah. Is this pipeline now, now that you've done this pipeline, 
I'm sure it took a bit of uh, time to build it, but now it's, is it reusable? Can your colleagues use it or? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've used it as an example of, of you know, how to build a pipeline and they, they've, uh, they've replicated a lot of things that I'm, I'm doing in these processes. <clears throat> All right. So, what, what was the actually the conclusion of this experiment? Like, where where you oh. right at the beginning, or yes, I was right. I mean, you'll find like if you see each pipeline of these as a battle, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the bigger picture is there's a lot of different battles, and and you know, someone might, might you know one of these might win one or two battles, but they'll lose the war. Right, and that was the case for the LSTM. Unfortunately, even with the best hyperparameters, uh, their even their best models did not win uh, mo uh, most of the time. So, it was actually like GBM that uh, beat it. So you were right all along. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> I would. That's good. So I, I think we're hitting the ten minute mark, and so if I would summarize this. Uh, Sounds like uh, you tried to figure out if Light GBM was better than LSTM for your case, and you built this experimentation pipeline, which allowed you to kind of launch these massive grid searches and and summarize the results. And it ended up so that you were right, Light GBM was better, and now you have a kind of semi reusable pipeline for your colleagues to use or you to use in I don't know upcoming projects. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Thanks for coming here, Serge. Thanks for talking with me. And thank you for everyone that is listening. <laughs>